Welcome back everybody to Fresh Outlook. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride, make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us of how we used to be. Okay, I'm not gonna sing and I didn't write those words. Uh, I think Whitney Houston wrote those words, right? Um, although they're also made famous by George Benson, I think. I remember him singing it at one point. Anyway, I borrowed those lyrics to set up our next topic, positive parenting. Let's say hello to the Fresh Outlook Think Tank. I am joined by Tom Gagliano, the author of the very interesting and informative book, Don't Put Your Crap in Your Kid's Diaper. Dr. Bart Rossi, a political psychologist. Coach Stephen Lynn, a fatherhood expert from the website DeedsDrivenDads.com. And Tom, I'm gonna to start with you since you're new to our program at, uh, for this segment. Being a parent in 2015 is harder than ever, I think, because so much has changed about the family from broken marriages to no dinner time to two parents working to a computer that can let all kinds of outside influences into our lives. What do you say, sir? I say there's one common thread, and I'm gonna give you a quick story. I'm watching a baseball game with my eight-year-old son, and he says, hey, Dad, how come the kids in the stand root so hard for their favorite baseball player? I said, those baseball players are the heroes. He thought about what I said, and he came back, and he said, you know, Dad, they may be my heroes someday, but you're always gonna be my first hero. No matter what time we're talking about, we are our children's first heroes. That responsibility is there, and we are gonna influence the intimacy they have in their lives, the parenting skills they choose, the careers they choose, the roles they play. So start out with the fact that we're the ones that are gonna teach them how to see the world and how the world is gonna see them, and that was the same throughout time. That'll never change. So you're always going to be a role model. You want that to be a positive role model. Bart, all of those things that I mentioned though, it's a tough time to be a parent, right? It's a very tough time, especially with the internet and all the barrage of information that's out there. But I think the key message for a parent here is how do you get your kid to be as good as that kid could possibly be? How does that kid develop into the person that makes him or her be as much as they want to become? not what necessarily I want my kid to become, but how do you really go into the world and look at this child and expose them to enough so that they can grow and they can move into areas that maybe we're not even thinking about. Music, sports, physics, you know, any, any kind of a, 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 an avenue. Uh, that's a tough job, but as bad as it is today, with the internet age, I also think it's somewhat positive because we're exposed to more. And I think if parents are open-minded and if they really work with their kids and expose them to a lot of different features, I think those kids today can develop into very interesting people, very effective people. Coach Lynn works a lot, particularly with dads. I feel dad is the missing component in many families today. Yes. Without a dad, it's very, very difficult for young men and young women. Um, that relationship that a woman is gonna have with other men is often largely modeled on the relationship she has with her dad. And men need another strong man to show them how to be a man. And that's lacking today. Tell me about your work with DeedsDrivenDads.com. Well, that's our premise. We, we understood that was the, the, variable, the variable that was missing all throughout the nation. Uh, all of us know that. We've talked about it many times that we've fallen down many times because the father was not there, that example that, that back, if you will. He's the, the enforcer for the family. He's the dis disciplinarian. He's also the one who gives the unconditional love and the understanding and the, and the motivation. So when he's not there, that gap is either not gonna be filled or unfortunately we've seen filled by the streets. All of us understand the streets. You know, you and I have talked about it many times. Somebody's gonna fill in those gaps and, and more times than not, the one who fills those gaps, the streets, gives them the misinformation. That's where we start seeing the high pregnancy rates, the dropout rates, the drug, act, the drug addicts um, escalating. So the father is everything. He is the backbone of that family. And he does it through deeds, not words. He's going to be doing a lot of laundry. He's going to be doing a lot of dishes. He's going to do a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Change the diapers. Exactly. The all things. A done. father, a real father can do all things in that family. There's no job that is specifically designed for the mother. That's out of the question. Tom, why is 
sexism allowed to exist when it comes to the family, but in not and not in other arenas. Dads are discounted today, I'm sorry. They're almost like an option. I don't know if I'm gonna raise this child on my own or let the dad be part of his life. That's an option for a lot of women when they're having a baby, whether or not the father's gonna be part of the life. You see it on TV shows and popular culture all the time. That's a huge issue, as the coach was saying. You need dads, if you can, if possible, you need two parents. You do, and I think dads need to take the the approach of spending time with their children individually. Doesn't have to be always around with the mom. And instilling an environment of safety, what that means is your child needs to be able to talk to you about their feelings, their fears, their sexual orientation, their curiosity with drugs. If you don't create a safe place for your child to talk to you about those things, as you inferred, they're gonna solicit that information from the wrong people. And they're gonna develop negative core beliefs. If I can't talk to my dad, what's the matter with me? Something's wrong with me and those negative core beliefs will be acted out in very destructive ways. So it's very important for dads to instill that safe environment for their children. Now that doesn't mean you're not the rule maker. That doesn't mean you don't give them discipline and, and, and consequences on the choices they make. Never the choice you're a bad child and you deserve to be punished. No, the message is you made a bad choice. We all do. And you need consequences for that choice. We need to teach them that what they do in life is based on choices not because they're a bad kid. It's a very different distinction, distinction between the both. Right. Doc, I was gonna to turn to you for just a second. You're not only a psychologist, you're also a dad, right. and a successful dad. I know you're quite close to your daughter. You're helping her in her parenting now of her child. Right. How were you able to bridge that gap with your daughter, stay connected to her life, even now as an adult, become an essential part of her uh, existence? Great question. I, I think as a psychologist and also as a dad, um, it's about expectation levels. You know, what is my child's expectation level? What are they looking to achieve in life? Um, my daughter, ha my younger daughter happens to be very happy that she is now a mother. Uh, my older daughter in California is extremely pleased that she's successful helping people with addiction problems. She's very successful. She's really happy about it. And she's doing something she really likes to do. They both are. And I think if, if they, you have the right expectation level as, as a kid growing up and you're thinking about where you're going, where you're heading, even if it's in a few different directions until you eventually find out, that's a great thing. Because if you're going in a direction that dad is pushing you in, we see that in sports, or, or we, we, we see that you know, moms are pushing in a particular direction, that's really quite harmful. Today we need to be exposed to a lot of things and go down the right direction and have the right expectation levels. Coach, are we sometimes too politically correct with our children that we're not going to yell at them when they need to get yelled at, maybe spank them if they need to get spanked? Uh, I mean, this player who got in so much trouble for hitting his kid with a, a switch, I mean, I, I didn't think it was that big a deal. I know the media made a lot out of it. This man was a monster because, God forbid, I got hit with twigs. And of course. Worse. When calls <laughs> and I, I'm okay now other than this twitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> tell me about the political correctness in parenting. Do you think we need to worry less about what other people say about us and do what we need to do? Well, we have to play our position, if you will, understand our roles. Um, we were talking about it a little earlier in the green room, uh, this, this notion that your, you and your kid, your kid has power. Your, you and your kid, uh, they could do what they want to do. Um, you're kind of their friend, their buddy. That's out of the question. You are their manager. You are managing your family, which is your team. And as a manager, that means you assume all roles. And uh, there is no political correctness when I'm, it's my rules. You are technically still mine, all mine. Uh, your successes and your failures are directly tied to my management of you. So therefore, we see a lot of parents that are not willing to do that. But really what we've seen, Logan, is particularly in the last few years, is a lot of parents never had one to manage themselves. Right. So it's hard to manage someone else if you've never been managed. Right. You know, I didn't really have a father. I didn't have a mother that was involved in my life right. to the point where they helped me steer me in the right, right direction. So now that I'm a mother or a father, I don't know what to do. Right. 
I don't know how to, I don't really know how you to know, talk and to them. We, we even have terms today that are different than before. Exactly. Helicopter parents, right. you know, that they're, they're, they're always hovering and yeah. they're always pushing, you know. Well, yeah. there's such a balance because, you know, you don't want to do too much either. You need the kids to stand on their own. When my yeah. kids got out of college, I sent them out of state. I said, go get jobs out of state. Find out what it's like to live on your own. And they love it and they're thriving. Tom, I'm going to ask you about your book. I am assuming by the title it means don't bring your emotional baggage and project it onto your children. Well, we all, a child's born, we have expectations, we have fears, some healthy, some not. We have a load of things we put in their diaper before they even can walk. And we have to really look at the expectation piece. Am I living my life through my children? Is that fair? Should I love my children unconditionally for who they are or they have to be who I want them to be? When a child grows up knowing that they're loved with who they are, they're going to grow up with integrity and they're going to face the world in a very healthy way and in a productive way. If a child feels that they have to make their parents happy first, they lose their sense of self. And if they lose that se their sense of self, it's going to create all kinds of bad actions later on in life. You have to be true to you first in a respectful way. And if you're not, if I'm worried about how other people feel or making other people happy first, I'm going to act that out in very negative ways as I get older. Bart, I'm going to give you a final thought. Then you yeah, later. you know, I often talk about a winning personality. And I think it's so important for parents today to help kids develop a winning personality, being comfortable in who they are, being relatively consistent, not being a flip-flopper like we see in politics, <laughs> uh, for example and not discarding people. And most importantly, is your kid going to develop to become a good listener? It's so important in the world today to really be a good listener and to, to hear even people that you don't really particularly want to hear, but you are still listening. And, and I think as a parent, you can really help a kid become a winning personality. Your thoughts, Coach Lynn? You know, we, we opened a segment of talking about, is it tougher now to be a parent? And I have to say, no, um, it's not tougher. Sure, there are more obstacles before us. There are more, more ways to get off track, if you will. However, some of the basics are still the same and will always be the same. Showing sacrifice, patience, faith, commitment, unconditional love for your children. Those are the basic, our basic plays, if you will. Mm -hmm. once, you, once you get those right, get that tight, then you can start dealing with other things. Other things that try to come in the picture will be uh, alleviated. We don't want any fancy plays in this family. <laughs> Let's do the basics now. No Let's have respect. Yeah, back. yeah. No reverses. None <laughs> exactly, of that stuff. Let's exactly. just have the basic through the hole. Score touchdowns. Same thing with the family. Basics. I think you all made great points. Great topic. Um, great conversation. And the thing is, if your kids win, you win. Yeah, man. Uh, there's no better role in my life than being a parent. That's it. Coach Lynn, Tom Gagliano, Bart Rossi. Thanks for your time. We will have more after this when we come back. It is time for our lightning round.